Hello everybody, so in today's video I'm gonna show you how to port forward a Minecraft server and in today's tutorial you're gonna learn how to port forward a server so other people with different networks can join your server and you will also learn how to add a custom domain to your Minecraft server. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do here is simply go ahead and locate your server files here I'm just using the Vanilla Minecraft server software, but this works with any other Minecraft server software. So simply go to the directory of this and you should see a bunch of files and folders for your Minecraft server. You have maybe more of these depending on what you did with the server, but the thing we need to focus on here is mainly running the server. We need to do this just to make sure that the server is working. So to do this, you can run server.jar or you can run run.bat, that depends what you did with the server, but you should see a window or a terminal window that shows up, and you should see a console. Here, the server has done done, it says done within a matter of seconds. So, what you want to do here is simply go to Minecraft, and here I have Minecraft 1.2.4, and what you want to do is go to multiplayer, add server, server address, and type in 0 .0 0.0.0.0. Now what this is, it is just your local host, which is your computer. So do done, and here we see our server is online. We can join it if we want, but we know that the server is online. So we need to be able to join with our IP onto our server, because we know that the server works. So that's a good thing. That means we can join and other people can join as well. So we can close that. And we can remove our server here. So, what you want to do here is simply close your server to keep everything nice and simple. And we now need to find ourselves our IP for our computer to your router. So it is not your public IP, it is your local IP. And to do this, you simply need to go to settings. Then you need to go to network and internet. And then you want to click properties. Now, if you have Windows 10 and Windows 11, it might be a bit different. But what you want to do here, it is quite simple. You just want to go to properties of your internet or ethernet. And once you scroll down a tiny bit, you should see these here. IPv4 address. You just want to know your IPv4 address of your computer. And it is not the gateway. The gateway is the important thing for later. But it is this one right here. This is the address that we want. So for example, mine is 192.168.225. That is the address that I will use if I want to play my server on the other device onto the same network. This will not work with a different network. It will work with my network, but not other people's network. So that's the important thing here. So we can join our server using this as well. So if you copy and we turn on our server as well again, we will be able to join our server with both 0.0.0.0 and as well as our IPv4 address. So the server is done. We can go to Minecraft, add server, control V, done. And here we have the same thing. It is the exact same thing as 0.0.0.0. So we can just continue playing. So this means that anyone in our network can join the server for sure because we can join the server using this IP. Now, if we close the Minecraft again, we will be able to add this IP here, so this one, to our router. And this is what tells the router that, okay, someone wants to join to this IP and this IP will link to this computer and this computer will link to itself, 0000, and will be able to run the server. So, what you want to do here is simply go and do two things. You want to be able to find your default gateway here, and you want to copy this. Now, this has nothing to do with Minecraft. We want to actually go to our web browser, and I will go through one thing before, is if you can't find your gateway or this doesn't work for some reason, what you can do is simply search up something like Bell Router IP, and here you can see this thing and this is the exact same number that we have copied so you just want to search up your router's brand and then you'll be able to see 
the router gateway if this method does not work for you. So all we want to do is go and paste in the gateway. So we want to paste in this one here to our actual search here on top, not this one, this one. This one might work sometimes, so this one will work. And you just want to enter. So this will now bring you to the actual router page. Now, what you want to do here is different for everyone, but there is some similarities, such as you need to usually use a administrator password to access it. Now, this is where we get into the complicated thing that if you don't have the administrator password, you will need it in many cases. If you don't need it for some reason, good, but you might need it. And what you can do here, you can go to the router that you have in your house and you can check the actual sticker in the back and you can try out different passwords that it shows until one works. So you need to have access to the physical box, but in most cases you should have that. So in my case, it is advanced tools and settings and this will ask me for a password. So I'm just going to add my password here and then we'll be able to start port forwarding. So let's do that. Okay, so once we did this, we'll now have access to our router's advanced settings. And here you should see somewhere called port forwarding. Now, there's a name for this. You might want to search up this for your specific router, but you should see something with the name of port. So once you found something with something like port, simply click on it and you should have a window like this. Now, following this, it will be the same for most routers. This one adds my device automatically once I put the IP, but this is the only difference, but this is the exact same window, so this should be easy. So, once you have your port forwarding window, what you want to do is go and create a new rule, and you have this, something. What this is here, this is just a name, so you can give it server, doesn't matter. The protocol has to be both. And now this is where we go into the ports. Now the ports for this, it is quite simple. It is just the default Minecraft Java port. And you can simply find this by typing Minecraft Java port. And you should just find it right here. Well, it, this is the same for all servers. You can change it if you really wanted to. That's what some server softwares and actual hosting softwares do, but you have this port here and it is always good for you to use this simple port here. So it is 25565. And what you want to do here, you want to go back to your router and you just want to fill up all of these things here with this same port here. There you go. So you just want to fill up all of this. Now, there is an exception that is that like will be uh, like if you had like, uh, for example, geyser, things like that, maybe. But in most cases, uh, you just want to fill up these slots or so internal and external ports. You just want to fill up with the same 25565. Then what you want to do is go to your IP for your actual device. And if you remember what this is, it is this right here. So this is your computer's IP. And this is what you want to put in there. So if we check 192, so we just put 192. 168, 168, 2, and 25. And there you go. So this is something like this that you want to have set up. And of course, once you have done everything, you can do create and you can do save. And there you go. Now, what I meant by my device adding it automatically, this is the name of my computer and my IP has changed to this. Now this is the only difference of this router and maybe yours, but this is the only difference. But what you want to do, 25565 in your ports, your computer's IP, and make sure this is on. If this is on, all good. You click save. What you can do now, you can simply close this page. You won't be using it anymore. And we now have this page. Now, what is this page? Well, this page is the page for your actual IP which is a public one. So this is now public IP. We are not talking about your private IP anymore. So what you want to do now is find your public IP. And to do this, there's a lot of websites, but you can just simply go and search up what's my IP. So you can do what's 
my IP and you should just find it. So here we have the Google one, for example, we have all these, we have this website. I will have this one linked in the description, but there you go. Here it says the IP is different. That is why it's important to reload on most of these websites. If you don't reload, your IP will be like a bit different. So make sure to reload and you will see your IP here. This is your public IP. So if we copy this, there you go. We can now go to our Minecraft server status and test out our IP. But we can always go to Minecraft as well and test out our IP as well. Remember, we are currently port forwarding. It is on. So if we do done, we can now connect. So we know that our public IP is working. So we are currently connecting to ourselves using our public IP. So if this works, this means we can go back to our browser paste in our public IP and if we do this, here it is MLTD, there you go, 20 slot, 1.14 this means our server is online and other people can join our server so technically, this you can just give this IP to your friends and whatnot and they will be able to join your server that's it now, there's something else that you can do which might be very beneficial, especially if you have more of a community-based server which with people that you don't talk a lot with. Why? Because these IPs change. They change. So what this means is you will not have the same IP. By the time this video goes out, I'm probably not going to have the same IP. Maybe not because I'm going to upload this quite fast, but most cases, the IP will change. And this is fine if you have a small server. You just say, okay, this is my new IP. But if you have a larger server or more widely broad amount of people on the server, you might not be able to tell everyone, okay, this IP has changed, has changed, has changed. So what do you want to do in this case? Well, what you can do, you can get yourself a domain. Now, this is where we go into the domain part of this tutorial. This is very easy when it comes to actually adding your domain to your server. But what's a domain? Well, a domain is the thing we've been using forever. It is these. For example, porkbug.com. This is a domain registrar, and the domain just lets you add IP addresses and to text form, basically. So, for example, if you're in the domain registrar, this is the same thing for anything. I'm just using porkbun, for example, but it will work for anything else. You can just go into the search box and type in Minecraft Server 2025, for example. And this is not a search, this is the actual domain that you want, for example. This can be anything in most cases. And here we have .ca, .it.com, here it is. And we can buy these, and then it's gonna give you something like this. Domains. And once you have bought your domain, it is not free, it is usually an amount of money per year. But once you have your domain, what you can do is go to the DNS settings. And you should have something like this. Now, the window might be a bit different depending on what domain register you're using, but it is the same thing at the end of the day. For example, here we can see that we have different types. Now, this is very easy when it comes to actually connecting our domain because all we want to do is select A as we have our own IP. This is our IP. We don't have an actual port to it, so we just use A. For the host, you can just leave it blank or you can just add a, a host like SMP for example. So now it is now smp.luminosity.net, that's the domain, that's the subdomain. And this is our public IP. And we can just do add. You might have add or save. And now we have smp.luminosity.net and this links to this. So basically this picture in arrow here and this is what this is. I connect an arrow here and I go here. So this is like a way to connect your server that looks a bit cleaner than an actual IP. So if I go to my Minecraft server here, we have our server here as well. If I go to the server testing here, so here it is. I just wait for it. There you go. SMP that this has already been connected. And it is the same thing as this. This is the same thing because this just points to this. So, if I remove these two to make it nice and simple again, add server, I have smp.domain, click done, we can join a server, 
and we are now in our server. So yeah, honestly, it is this easy to actually connect your domain to port forward. Maybe the hardest thing in this might just be getting the administrator the password for the actual router, but the rest is non-problematic and yeah, you can actually go ahead and play on your server pretty easily after you have started port forwarding. So yeah, and for the last things of this video, if your domain does, uh, you keep your domain and your IP does change. So for example, if this changed, for example, and it's a new one, instead of telling people, oh, my IP has changed, you just change it right here. You go to edit, you change it here, and after this, they will still be connecting using this, but it will now be pointing to a new, like, IP, and it will, like, basically nothing changed. So that is the use of a domain, it's just that even if the IP change, the users and the players don't need to change anything on that side. You, you just have to change this number here. So, yeah. That will be this for today's video, and if you like today's video, make sure to like and subscribe, and see you for the next one. Bye!